Welcome back to Cool Grasses and Hot Zones. The topic of today's video on fescue lawn care and transition zones is your annual planning calendar. Without a planning calendar, you are not likely to succeed. As the old saying goes, a goal without planning is just a wish. An annual lawn care planning calendar can be as simple or as complicated as you want to make it. Today, I'm going to keep this as simple and bare boned as possible. You can tweak this accordingly as we discuss lawn care topics in greater detail in upcoming videos. First, let's look at what the Virginia Cooperative Extension recommends for the maintenance of cool season turf grasses. Cooperative extensions are partnerships between state universities and counties in those states. They serve as an educational resource for everyone in the community. Lawn care is just one of many different areas they provide guidance on. Your state will likely have created a similar calendar. This particular chart includes seeding, fertilization, pre and post herbicides, and cultivation, dethatching, and recommendations on which months those activities should take place. The X's refer to the preferred timing, while the asterisks refer to second best timing. As indicated in my first video, two of the most important steps you need to take are one, Raising your mower height to three and a half to four inches before the temperatures turn hot. And two, watering your lawn properly. If you do these two things, you'll be ahead of the game. The next most important step is weed control. Let's start with pre-emergent herbicides. A pre-emergent is essential in spring unless you already have exceptionally lush grass that will crowd out most weeds. The key here is timing. You do not have the two-month window this chart indicates. You need to put your pre-emergent down when the soil temperature reaches the 50 to 55 degree range. Why? That's when many weeds, particularly crabgrass, germinate. An easy way to keep track of this is to watch when the forsythia bloom. As soon as they bloom, get your pre-emergent down immediately. In most transition areas, this will probably be sometime in March. The second most important pre-emergent window is the late summer or early fall. This is when you are trying to control different types of weeds that germinate during this time of year. Some herbicides will also help suppress weedy grasses such as Poa Nua that germinate when soil temperatures drop. As for post-emergent herbicides, I recommend spot treating as need be from March until early November. If you have a significant weed problem and need to cover your entire lawn with a blanket or a broadcast application, I would recommend doing this before you overseed in the fall. The specific timing depends on what kind of post-emergent herbicide you are using and how that chemical can affect seed germination. You will need to carefully read product instructions. An important note here, if you are reseeding, almost all pre-emergent herbicides will prevent your grass from germinating, making any overseeding project pointless. If you are planning to overseed, don't put down a broadcast application in the fall. There is one herbicide that I know of that is safe to use during overseeding, and I will address that in an upcoming video. Which does bring us to overseeding. Overseeding is always recommended if your lawn is thinned out and has a lot of bare spots. The best time to do this is late summer as the temperatures begin to cool. The cooler temperatures and hopefully additional natural moisture will aid seed germination and growth. But as I mentioned in my previous video, you need to strictly adhere to watering two to three times per day to keep the seed moist if nature isn't helping you out with rain. Overseeding past early October is risky as the new grass might not survive cold temperatures. Spring is the only other time to consider reseeding, but the possibility of hot spring temperatures make this less than ideal. A great complement to overseeding is cultivation, also known as aeration, and dethatching. Both not only dramatically enhance the success rate of overseeding, both also dramatically help your soil breathe better and allow whatever you do apply to your lawn reach the soil. Homeowners can now buy really inexpensive do-it-yourself dethatchers that are easy to use. Aeration is more involved. You either have to hire someone to do this for you or rent and operate an aerator yourself. Aerating in the fall is never a bad idea, but you don't have to do this every year. But if you do aerate, I would strongly recommend overseeding at the same time. 
Since the thatching now is so easy, I would do this at least once every spring or fall. And speaking of soil, I think this chart is missing a critical maintenance activity, soil amendments. As I said in my last video, healthy grass will only grow out of healthy soil. Too many homeowners ignore their soil. I strongly recommend adding soil amendments such as humic acid and biochar both in the spring and the fall. This will boost microbial activity and soil fertility as well as help aid in water and nutrient retention. You also want to have your soil tested to see if you need to add lime to your lawn in order to raise its pH. This is an important step. If your soil is too acidic, your grass will struggle and likely be replaced by unwanted weeds. Moss could also become an issue. Finally, let's talk about the most controversial subject, fertilization. Lawn care companies and fertilizer manufacturers will lead you to believe that you have to fertilize year round. Not only is this not true, but you can do more harm than good. I'll go into greater detail and source that information in my upcoming video on lawn fertilization. But in a nutshell, you only really need one good fertilizer application, and that is in the very late summer or early fall. The cooperative extensions throughout the transition zone states are all in agreement that this is the most essential time period to fertilize. Your lawn needs this food in order to recover from the stresses of summer. I would recommend early to mid-September. The second best time? No, not the spring, but around the time of your last mow. This could range from mid-October to the beginning of November. Why then? A late fall, also known as winterization feeding, will help promote root growth in the spring. It will also aid in greening up your lawn in the spring without causing excessive shoot growth in the leafy part of the grass. What about the spring? Even the chart indicates March through May as the secondary time period to fertilize. Lawn care companies and do-it-yourselfers swear by spring fertilization in order to green up your lawn and make it the envy of the neighborhood. The problem is there is an emerging belief that spring fertilizations promote leafy shoot growth at the expense of root growth exactly at the time when root growth is the most important. Most lawn fertilizers are nitrogen rich. This is what makes your grass grow and look lush, but it's a temporary cosmetic improvement. This is the time period when your roots should be growing stronger and deeper to prepare for the upcoming hot summer months to better withstand the lack of rain. Instead, the plant growth is now focused on the leaf rather than the root. Worse, root growth is actually stunted and the grass becomes weaker even though it looks healthier. When the summer rolls around, your once lush lawn will quickly look pretty haggard in the heat. In addition, the spring nitrogen can also help feed fungi that will cause lawn disease issues when the temperatures and humidity rise. The best way I can put it is this. Would you rather have a lawn that looks good all year or a lawn that looks outstanding in the spring but looks worn out in the summer and has to be rebuilt in the fall? The safest strategy is to fertilize only once or twice per year and both times in the fall. I will discuss other possibilities outside of the optimum root growth time period in my upcoming video on lawn fertilization. Overall, you can see your total annual lawn care program is not overly complicated. One, apply two pre-emergent herbicide applications, one in the spring and one in the fall and only one if you are overseeding. Two, spot treat weeds throughout spring, summer, and fall as needed. If you have a huge weed problem, broadcast treat your lawn once right before you overseed in the fall. Three, if you overseed, consider dethatching and aerating in the fall. Four, amend your soil in the spring and fall. Apply lime if your pH is low. Five, finally, 
you only really need to fertilize once or twice per year. That's it. Five steps. And you can do this for far less money than paying a lawn service company. If you like my content, please help this channel by subscribing to the channel, clicking the notification bell, liking this video, and commenting below. I welcome all feedback. Thank you.